All right, welcome everybody. We're going to start here. Um, lesson 64 in um, Saxon here. Complex fractions in numbers. Okay, we're going to do lesson 65, 66, and 67 after these. Uh, but for lesson 64, right, um, if I'm given, um, we're going to call them um, layered complex fractions, right? So what are the, you know, if I'm given layered fractions, even layered fractions. I'm just going to write a simple step here. So given layered fractions. Um, there's not anything too crazy complicated about these. They look a little weird, okay? Um, but I, I just think of doing this, right? I just think of, of adding as I need to, right? So add, and then I divide, and then I add. Okay, and I keep on going in this um, pattern. Okay, and you'll see what I mean when I just work on this first example. So example two, I have a over x, and then I'm supposed to add um, four, and then four is over um, one plus b over x okay okay so the first one right so if i'm going to add well if i'm going to add um these both have to have the same denominators right so if i'm going to add then that means that this one right here right this is a fraction so i need to add these that means that this is going to be x over x okay so um that means okay let's do this next step so let's do i think probably going down Vertically is probably the best. I have a over x still, right? And then this one's going to be 4. And then I'll have um, x plus b over x, right? And then from there, right, this right here, this bar is a division sign, right? So that means what I can do next is I can say, okay, now I have a over x, and then this is plus. And then I have 4, right? And then it's multiplied by this reciprocal. So then I have 4, and then it's times x, and then I have x plus b. So what I have is x, a over x, right? I'm writing this in, in many steps, so I, you don't have to write it in as many steps necessarily, right? And then it looks like this. So this looks like something that we're more used to. Okay, now I have to add these, right? Okay, so in order to add these, right, what did I do over here? I said, well, let's find that least common um, denominator, right? Over here, I have to do the same thing. So my LCD here is going to be, uh, right, it's my unique denominator, so it's going to be x, and I have x plus b. So it's x, x plus b. Everything needs to have that as its denominator. I'm going to use a different color to uh, point this out, right? And then, so that means that this one needs to have x over x multiplied here, right, and this is in parentheses, and then over here, I'm missing x plus b for the top and the bottom, right, so then I say x plus b, that's in parentheses, I'm not very good at putting the parentheses there because I ran out of room, okay, x plus b, just parentheses around here, and then I can go to the next step, and I can just leave this as a x plus b for now. And then I can write plus 4x squared. And then the bottom is going to be x times x plus b. Okay. And close that parenthesis. And really, I can't go any further. I mean, the only thing that I could do now, um, but that's that can be a final answer. The only thing I could do further is I could say ax plus um a, B, plus 4X squared. And then I can write it over the denominator that I already had there, right? X, X plus B. Uh, that, this first one here on the left that I wrote right there, that could be a final answer as well. Okay? That is my answer right there. All right. Um... So that's my layered fractions there. Now let's think about um, some complex numbers. So that's our second part here. 
Hey, if I have square root of minus 2 and square root of minus 3, right? We learned before that we could multiply um, inside the radicals. Well, square root product rule doesn't apply to negative numbers because negative numbers, right? If we remember back to our imaginary numbers, right? We had i is equal to the square root of minus 1. i squared is equal to minus 1. i3 is just minus i. And then i to the power of 4 was equal to 1. Okay, so when we get to this step right here, we have to say i root 2, and then we have to say multiplied by i root 3. Okay, and then we can go to the next step and say, okay, then we have i to the power of 2, and then we can say square root of 6. Okay, and then from there, right, and say i squared, well, that's minus, right? So then our final answer is the negative square root of 6. And that's it. Okay. Um, and uh, then if we go to another example here, let's go to example uh, 4, right, where we're adding these together. Um, there's no special um, rule necessarily for these. Complex numbers can be combined and multiplied um, pretty much like, you know, normal uh, variables. I have to simplify them as I go, right? But if I have 4i to the power of 3, and I have minus 2i to the power of 4, and plus 2 square root of minus 9, and then I have plus square root of minus 3 times the square root of minus 3. Okay, I want to simplify this. Okay, I kind of wrote these a little farther away, but anyway, I have i there, i squared, so this first one is i to the 3, so it's minus i. So that means that I have minus 4i, okay? And then i to the power of 4 is just 1, so that just means I have minus 2. This one right here, I have plus 2. Well, square root of minus 9 is i, and then square root of 9, so that means I have 2i times the number 3. And then for this one, all right, well, well, it's kind of similar to this one that I just did, right? I'm going to have two i, so that means I'll have i squared, and then I'll have square root of 9, right, which means I'll have 3. Okay, so let's just go ahead and simplify from here. Not going too many steps at one point. Or i minus 2, and then I have plus 6i, and then over here I have plus, well, actually plus, but let's see here. I have i squared, which is minus 1, so I have minus, and then the minus the square root of 9, so it's minus 3. Okay, now I can see what's similar, right? I have my numbers, so my numbers are pretty normal, and so are my variables, right? I have minus 4i plus 6i, so I have a total of 2i's left, right? And then I have minus 2 minus 3, so that means I have minus 5. That's it for that one. Okay. Um, now you might have a uh, situation where they give you a binomial to multiply, right? So, example six. Like I said, there's not, you know, they can be multiplied and combined very similarly to variables. You have to follow the rules for um, exponents, but beyond that, it's pretty similar. Okay. So now I have this one. So we can go ahead and sketch out uh, this distribution, right? So I'm distributing, 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 okay? So if I have 5i times 4, right? I'm doing 5 times 4 says so 20, so I have 20i. And then I have 5i times 3i, so that means I have 15, right? So I have 15, and then I have i squared, and then I have minus um, 8, right, minus 8, and then that last arrow, I have minus 6i. So, um, I have all the i's here, so I have an i at the beginning and i at the end, okay, I didn't lose all my i's, okay, okay, so there's my i's, <laughs> and then I have uh, a total of 14 single i's, right, 
and then this right here um if i'm just going to list it here just to, in the interest of showing all my work right i'll have minus 15 minus 8 so then on the final answer i'll have 14 i i'm going to have minus 23 okay and that's my answer there 14 i minus 23 okay or minus 23 plus 14i, however you want to write it. Um, and I think that take care, takes care of that one right there. Um, you look at any other examples in here, um, if you need extra help, and then just let me know. Um, and take advantage of tutor hours that I've offered by email as well. Work on the practice, and then you move on to lesson 65. All right. So lesson 65 is about advanced substitution. Okay, lesson 65. We have advanced substitution. Okay, substitution. So I'm going to have four equations. Okay, so I have four equations. This is where it just this is why it's called advanced, because you're, you're dealing with a little bit more, right? You're just dealing with four equations, but it's not, um, see that it's not too complicated here, right? But I have four equations, and I have um, four variables. Okay, so um, let's list the ones they gave us. They gave me rp okay so rp is a single variable it's like i had x or something okay but i'm doing rp and then i have tp okay so those are two so they're multiplied together like this and that's equal to 693 and then i have rc tc and that's equal to 165 and then I have this next one where I have RP equals 3RC. And the last one I have is TP equals 12 minus TC. Okay, and I could have written each of these variables as a different color maybe, but you can see I have a RP, right? And I have RP listed in, a, in two different places. I have it listed right here, and I have it listed right over here, right? And then um, same with a bunch of these other ones here. I'm going to bring my arrows there. So I say, okay, well, what's, what's something I can do? Well, let's first I look at most two, the two complicated equations, if you will, okay? Um, which have the most variables in them. Um, I guess they all have two, don't they? <laughs> but um, they have a uh, big value. So 693 or 165. Um, if I look at this first one, well, I have a direct relation between RP and RC, right? Okay, so let's try to draw this, right? So then say, okay, well, I know RP is exactly equal to 3RC, right? You see how those are identical values? So I know that one. So I can say, okay, good. Let's go ahead and start that down here, right? And say, um, I have three R C, okay? And then, um, you know, I have TP as well. So TP is equal to 12 minus TC. So let's write that too, 12 minus TC. And that's equal to 693. That's all I can see for now, okay? Whoops, 693, not 99. And then if I multiply um, this out, I'll get 36 R of C. And then um, I'll get minus 3 R C times T C. Right? You see I'm just distributing these right here so I distributed that and I distributed that and then it's still equal to 693 well I wish you might notice and you should notice hopefully okay 
is that up here, um, RCTC is equal to a value, right? So if RCTC is equal to a value, then I can plug that in right here, right? And I can go to the next step and say, okay, good. I have 36 RC, okay, I'm going to lose my 3 there. Uh, what was that? It was 165. So I have minus 3 times 165. And that's equal to 693 still. And then I can move this amount to the other side. Right? Um, and say, well, let's see here. 3 times 165. Um, let's see, what is that? Uh... <laughs> You're not having my character write this second. I'll have it. I'll move it over here. So uh, three times one sixty-five, four ninety-five. Yeah, I should have been able to do that in my head. So four ninety-five. So then I have plus four ninety-five, right? And then I have one thousand one hundred eighty-eight over here, and then it's equal to thirty-six C or 36 RC rather, okay, and then RC is equal to 33, okay, all right, well, um, RC is 33, I can go ahead and plug these into um, a couple other things, right, and say, okay, well, RC, that means I can go back and I can go put it into my Original right so RCTC is 165 so let's let's do that so RCTC Equals 165 So then I can write it like this 33 TC 165 that means that TC is 5 right and um, RC is 33, but yeah, that's the one I just did, okay, <laughs> and then um, since TC is equal to 5, right, I know that TP is equal to 12 minus TC, not minus TC, right, so that means that my TP is equal to 7, okay, now I have three things, right? Three things. My last one is my RP, okay? Oh, no, okay, so my RP. So I know uh, my RP, so what's my CP? My CP is 7 because I had RP, TP, and 693. So then I have... RP times 7 is 693. So, and then if I divide, right, I can divide by 7. And if I divide by 7, then I can find out that my RP is equal to 99. Good. Okay, so now I have all four variables, right? So you can see, if we go back to the beginning, right? First part is just go ahead and taking them all and putting them as best I can into one of the equations. And it makes sense to put them into one versus the other. I could have done the other way around. There's not a, uh, you know, always a right way to do it. And then I substitute those things back in. So once I find one, then I say, okay, where does it make sense for RC? It makes sense to put RC back where RCTC is, right? And then go from there. Okay, good. And that finishes up lesson 65. Go ahead and go there. You won't always have whole numbers. Um, so A has two whole numbers for RC and RP, but TC and TP will be fractional, okay? So just look out for that um, when you do that example. Let me run to lesson 66 when you're ready. Okay, so lesson 66 here. Lesson 66. Think about fraction signs. So 
signs and then we have um, 30, 60, 90 triangles, okay? Okay, so we have, um, uh, right, if I have something like um, minus A plus B, right, and so, you know, I'd rather um, uh, uh, write it a different way, right, and so I'd rather write, um, I could write it as B minus A or whatever, okay, that's obvious, okay. But what if I multiply um, something by um, a um, negative, right? So, like, let's look at a fraction instead, maybe. Okay, so if I have minus 3 fourths, right? I could also write this as positive 3 over minus 4, right? There's nothing wrong with writing that. Okay. Um, and so, if I think about um, turning something around, I can use a negative to turn it around, right? I can put the negative in either spot. So, let's look at example um, two, okay? So, make it a little bit more concrete here because um, that'll help, okay? I have 4x plus 5, okay? And then I have x minus 3 on the bottom. And then I'm told to add 2x minus 3 over 3 minus x. Okay, okay that's a little funny denominator there, right? Well, <laughs> yep, that um, is a little bit funny. So what I can do to switch these things around, right? I could say it's minus x plus 3, right? Okay. But what I could, can do instead here is I can say, well, let's multiply um, the top and the bottom by minus 1, right? Because if I multiply the top and the bottom by the number minus 1, I'm really multiplying that term there by the number 1, right? Because minus 1 divided by minus 1 is the number 1. So, obviously, this first term stays exactly the same. So, I have 4x plus 5 over x minus 3. And then over here, okay, um, if I look at this one, right, so I could keep my plus here. But if I do minus 1 for this top part, then I end up with positive 3. So, I'm going to write it backwards. And I'm going to say 3 minus 2x. And then over here, then I can write x minus See how it just switches those things around, right? And then it's easier to add these things, right? Because then I say, okay, 4x plus 5 plus 3 minus 2x. I can directly add those because they have the same denominators, right? And then I just have 2x plus 8 over x minus 3. Pretty simple. Okay, we're going to apply this um, to another example here. Okay. Um, so example one, so example one, and we'll use it in, in next in our, some of our next lessons. It's really useful. Okay, so I have one, and then I have x minus three, and then I have minus seven a, and then um, on the uh, bottom I have three minus x. And then I can go ahead and write minus 1 over minus 1. Right. And then um, I'll have 1 over x minus 3. And then over here, instead of minus 7a, then I'll have plus 7a. And then I'll have x minus 3. And then I'll have 1 plus 7a on the top which I wasn't able to combine anything anyway, right? And then it's over x minus 3. Okay. All right, pretty straightforward. Now, let's think about um, 
triangles, okay? So triangles, and let's see here. So triangles, I have um, this triangle here that's a 30-60-90 triangle, which means right, I have a 90 degree here, and then I have a 30 here, and then I have a 60 here. Well, for ones like this, I have um, a... Um, a, a one here, okay, so I have a one where the 60 is, and then uh, it means I have a two here, and then I have a square root of three here, okay? So this is really valuable because I can use it to compare other 30, 69 triangles. I don't have to necessarily have this um, memorized, but if as long as I have some, either this or a trig function, right, sine, cosine, tangent, then it would work. So, for example, three, I have a triangle um, that looks like um, this, similar, okay, um, but it looks like this, okay, and instead, I have x, y, five, and then my 90 degree, or my 60 degree rather, is right here, and my 30 degree is right here, okay? So it doesn't look exactly the same as this one, right? Okay, well then I can rewrite um, this triangle right here um, to match it, right? And say, okay, well, if I rewrote that one, what would it look like? Well, if I rewrote that one, then I'd have one down here, I have a 60 here, right? And then this would be 30. Whoopsie. <laughs> Let me just try to write 30. 30. This is 90. And then um, I have 2 here. And then I have um, the square root of 3 over here. Okay? And I'm going to try to find x and y, right? So if I want to find x and y there, Right, I can say, well, let's do um, big triangle to small triangle. I like doing big to small, but you can do small to big if you want to. Okay, but if I do big to small, then I would say 5 is to 2 as y is to 1, right? And then I go ahead and cross multiply and say, okay, then I can do 5 like this, right, and then I can say 2y is 5, right, and so then y is 5 over 2, okay, and then if I want to do the other way, right, then I say, uh, or find the other missing one, right, and then I'd say 5 is to 2 as x is to root 3. And then I went ahead, go ahead and cross multiply again, right? Cross multiply like this. And then I end up with 2x is 5 root 3. And then x would be 5 root 3 over 2. Pretty standard stuff here, okay? So if you have any questions over this, um, let me know. Um, but that's how those are going to work. And go to the examples and see if you have any questions over that. Okay, next and finally, lesson 67. This is where we're going to apply what we just learned in this lesson because we're going to eliminate radical denominators. Okay, so that's what this lesson is called radical denominators. Okay, so lesson 67. So, radical denominators. Anything radicals? Well, those are the things that are in square root symbol, yes. Okay. So, um, what we're going to learn here is a what a conjugate is. Okay. 
to a conjugate. So a conjugate is simply flipping the signs of each term. Okay, so uh, right, so we have a conjugate, right? So a conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. So I'm just switching the sign of the second term, right? So I'm just switch. So basically, if you want to know how to do it, right? Switch. Oops, sorry, I messed up the w, right? Switch the last term sign. Okay, so let's look at it, how example one would work. So example one, I just have one over minus four plus root three. Okay, now you say, well, you know, what can I really simplify here? Well, I'm j I don't want the radicals to be in my denominator, okay? For whatever reason, but just take this, right? So um, it's easier to divide by... Um, you know, normal numbers, right, 4 or whatever, versus dividing by a square root or something, okay? So what I want to do here is multiply, right, multiply by um, the conjugate, right? So multiply top and bottom by conjugate. And this is not good. Uh, 10 here by the conjugate, okay? So here, right, our conjugate of the denominator here, so I'm going to multiply something on the top and the bottom, okay? And that's going to be multiplying by 1. So on the bottom here, I have minus 4 plus 3. So I'm going to multiply by minus 4 minus the square root of 3. Okay, so it's the opposite of that one. So then on the top, I'm going to do the same thing. Minus 4 minus the square root of 3. Okay? And so on the top, I'll just have minus 4 minus the square root of 3. And then on the bottom, right, I have to put this parenthesis here. I mean, minus 4 times minus 4. So that's going to give me 16, right? Yeah, and then, um, then I'm going to have uh, minus 4 times minus square root of 3, right? So that's going to give me plus 4 root 3. And then I'm going to do root 3 times minus 4, which is going to be minus 4 square root of 3. And then I'll do minus the square root of 9. Right, because I multiply those together. And then you can see, right, these two middle terms right here are going to cancel each other out. So then I'll have minus 4 minus root 3, and then it's going to be divided by 16. And then these two, right, these are going to cancel. So I'll have 16 minus 3, which means I'll have minus 4 minus root 3 over 13. And that's it, okay? So the conjugate there, I'm just switch, switching the sign of my last term, right? Um, and then it gets rid of my radical in the denominator. All right, and that finishes up lesson 67. If you have any questions over any of this, please uh, let me know, and uh, then I'll, I'll see you guys next week. And um, have a good day.